What's going on everyone, Jun with the Sushi Man, and in today's video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about sushi. And this is a beginner's guide, really covering the basics of what sushi is and what you need to know in order to start enjoying sushi. And I apologize if my voice is a bit raspy. I'm getting over a cold, again, nearly there though. It's kind of the norm when you have a child in preschool. Anyways, now let's jump right in. So I've divided this video into five main parts. What is sushi? Types of sushi? Sushi condiments? How to eat sushi? And making sushi. First, let's cover the most basic question. What is sushi? Now, I'm not going to get into all the history because I don't want this video to be longer than it needs to be. Plus, you really don't need to know the history in order to enjoy sushi. Just know that it dates back centuries and it has evolved tremendously throughout the years. And if you guys want to know the history behind sushi, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make a video on it. Anyways, sushi in Japanese translates to sour rice, and it actually refers to the vinegared rice and not the raw fish, which many people get confused. So whether you're eating raw tuna nigiri, a deep fried tempura roll, or plain and simple cucumber roll, it's all considered sushi because the vinegared rice is used. Now, one of the most common questions is, what's the difference between sushi and sashimi? Sashimi is the raw fish by itself, with no sushi rice. The same type of fish may be used for both, but just remember, in order for it to be sushi, there has to be sushi rice with it. If there's no rice, then it's sashimi. Okay, moving on to part two, the types of sushi. Now, there's a bunch of different types of sushi, but I'm going to cover the most popular styles that you typically see served at sushi restaurants. So first is the nigiri sushi, or just nigiri for short. And that's how it's pronounced, nigiri. The R is more of an L, sort of. So not nigiri, or even worse, nigiri. Don't do that. Nigiri in Japanese means to grip or grasp with your hand, and that's how these are made. We take a small ball of rice, a slice of fish, and hand form it together to make a bite-sized piece of deliciousness. And the topping is called neta. I use some hamachi or yellowtail for this, but it could be all different types of things. Most of the time raw fish, but not necessarily. You can have cooked seafood like shrimp, eel, vegetables sometimes, and even meat like wagyu beef. The combination of the seasoned sushi rice and the fresh neta makes for a perfect balance, and this is definitely my preferred style of sushi. Okay, moving on to the next, makizushi, or makimono, which are sushi rolls. And I'm going to explain the four most common styles here, but before I do, let me talk about the nori, since it's a crucial ingredient in any type of makizushi. Nori is dried seaweed, and it's what we use to roll the sushi and what holds everything together. And by using the nori differently, it creates the different styles of rolls. The first one is the hosomaki, which translates to thin roll. These have the nori on the outside and they usually consist of one or maybe two ingredients. It's the most traditional type of sushi roll and the most basic of the rolls. This one here is a kappamaki or cucumber roll. One thing to note with these though is that the seaweed will absorb the moisture from the rice and since it's on the outside, the texture might get a little tough if not eaten immediately. So if you're not a fan of the flavor of seaweed, then you might want to look into this next style roll, which is the uramaki or inside out roll. These are probably the most common style rolls you see at sushi restaurants here in the States. It reverses the hosomaki and puts the rice on the outside, which minimizes that flavor and texture of the seaweed. It also allows for more ingredients to be inside so we could get creative with different types of fillings. The California roll, Philadelphia roll, rainbow roll, caterpillar roll, I mean there's a ton of really popular rolls that are made this way. And these are the ones that I would recommend trying first if you're completely new to sushi. Something like the Cali roll or the Philly roll is probably a good start. This one's a salmon avocado roll with some masago on the outside, which are tiny smelt roll. Alright, moving on to our third roll, the futomaki. These are kind of a hybrid between the hosomaki and uramaki, in the sense that it has a seaweed on the outside, but can fit a lot more ingredients inside. Futomaki translates to big roll, or thick roll, and think of it as a modern day sushi burrito, but traditional. They usually have a lot more ingredients inside, or something bigger such as shrimp tempura or deep fried soft shell crab like the spider roll. And one of these can be a meal on its own, so just keep that in mind if you plan to order any futomaki. And you can have a lot of fun with these because you can fit so much. I put a bunch of ingredients in this one here. Unagi, masago, kanikama, cucumber, and kampyo. Alright, the last roll I'm going to cover is the temaki or hand roll. These are typically cone shaped or sometimes they can be cylindrical too, just depends on the chef. And they usually have a couple ingredients inside, along with some sushi rice of course. They're more of a per person roll, not really meant to share, so keep that in mind if you order any. And they're best eaten as soon as it's made so that the nori is nice and crisp. 
And it's very common to have temaki parties, especially in Japanese households, where there's a bunch of ingredients, some sushi rice, nori, and everyone makes their own hand rolls. I plan to make a video on this in the future, so stay tuned. This one that I've made here is an unagi hand roll with some broiled eel, avocado, and cucumber. And you can tell that the seaweed is getting soggy since I made all this before I started recording. So again, try to eat these right away. All right, now I wanna go over this little guy really quick. These are called gunkan maki, and they're kind of a mix between rolls and nigiri. There's a little rice ball, just like nigiri sushi, but then it's wrapped in a small sheet of nori like maki sushi. Gunkan in Japanese means battleship, and that's what these resemble. We use this style of sushi when the topping is too loose or it's very difficult to make into regular nigiri. Some popular ones you'll see are tobiko, masago, negitoro, uni, and ikura, or salmon roll, which is what I have here. All right, those are the main types of sushi that I'm gonna cover in this video. And as long as you know these, you should be able to understand majority of the menus at any sushi restaurant. Okay, let's move on now to sushi condiments. If you've seen a plate of sushi, you probably have seen something like this that's on the side. Well, this one is pickled ginger, and this green paste is Japanese guacamole. I'm just kidding. It's called wasabi, and it's very spicy, so don't go eating the whole thing. Unless, of course, you really want to. And you'd be surprised at how often people think this is guacamole. Anyways, real wasabi is a rhizome, which is very similar to a root, and it's grated down into a paste and served fresh either in or alongside your sushi. And I say real because majority of the wasabi that you see is actually not real wasabi, including this one. Real wasabi is extremely expensive, and most sushi restaurants opt for the cheaper fake version because of food cost. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the fake version is bad. Just know that it's made from horseradish, sometimes mustard, and green food coloring, rather than the real wasabi root or rhizome technically. Now, if you start eating sushi and enjoy the flavor of wasabi, then I highly recommend trying real wasabi sometime. Typically, higher-end sushi restaurants will use real wasabi and they'll grate it right in front of you to showcase that. And there's nothing like fresh, real wasabi. It actually has a sweetness to it that you won't find in the fake one, and it has a lot more delicate flavor. You get that kick, of course, but just enough where it balances out the sushi, not overpowering it. And with any type of wasabi, a little goes a long way, so use just enough where it complements the sushi, not too much where you can't taste anything else. All right, moving on to the pickled ginger. This is called gari in Japanese, and that's more of a sushi term where the Japanese word for ginger itself is shoga. And this is used as a palate cleanser in between different types of sushi. Now, I know a lot of people like to put it on top of the sushi itself and eat it with it, which, I mean, if you enjoy that, then I say that's fine, but it really depends on your setting. Let's say you're at a high-end omakase style sushi restaurant and the chef is serving sushi right in front of you. If you put a slice of ginger on top of your sushi, then that can be disrespectful to the chef because every part of that menu is thought out and each piece is made so that you don't have to add anything to it. So by adding something as strong flavored as ginger is basically destroying the chef's work. And the same goes for wasabi and soy sauce. Speaking of which, let's get into soy sauce or shoyu in Japanese. Soy sauce to sushi is like butter to bread. They complement each other so well and you'll never find a sushi restaurant that doesn't have soy sauce. But soy sauce does have a very strong flavor, so again, little goes a long way. And I'll get into this in the next section, but like any of these condiments, use it sparingly. Sushi is a delicate cuisine, so don't destroy it by pouring a ton of soy sauce on there. Now, if you guys want to learn how to make your own soy sauce for sushi, and trust me, this will level up your sushi game, then check out this video right over here. Alright, now let's get into part 4 of the video, how to eat sushi. Now, I'm going to make a separate video on sushi etiquette that will go more into detail on things you should and shouldn't do when eating sushi, but I'll cover some basics here. First, should you use chopsticks or hands? This really can be both, and you won't be punished for using either. Sushi is considered finger food, so if you can't use chopsticks that well, then go with the fingers. It'll be better than stabbing it with a fork. Next, as I mentioned in the previous section, don't overdo it with the condiments, especially if you're at a nicer restaurant, even more so if you're sitting at the sushi bar. The condiments are there to use, but only as a complement to the sushi. And out of the condiments, the one I get asked the most is how to properly use the soy sauce. And again, this really depends on the type of restaurant you're at. If you're fine dining at a omakase sushi bar, then a lot of times the chef will brush on a special soy sauce on each piece for you. Talk about service, huh? At least for nigiri sushi. And for other menu items, they'll usually explain the recommended way to eat it. For more casual restaurants, you'll most likely have a bottle of soy sauce along with a small dish so that you could dip your sushi in there. When you do this though, for any nigiri, try to dip the fish side into the sauce and not the rice. The rice soaks up too much of the soy sauce and will overpower the piece. For rolls, just dip the corner of it and try not to dunk it fully in there. Or worse, let it sit in your soy sauce dish. 
As for wasabi, traditionally it's supposed to be inside your sushi when it's made, but nowadays a lot of restaurants will keep it out, especially more casual ones. And I get it, if you're making a platter for a table of eight, there's going to be people that don't like wasabi, and it's easier to just leave it out and have them use the wasabi on their own. So in that case, you can add a bit of wasabi on top of your sushi, or a lot of times people will add it in their soy sauce and make a wasabi soy sauce slurry, which is frowned upon sometimes, but I personally think it's okay, as long as you're in the more casual setting. And again, in moderation. Now, when you go to a sushi restaurant, if you're looking for the best sushi experience, then sit at the bar. A good itamae or sushi chef should be able to accommodate your special needs, and that's easier to do when you can speak to them directly. Now, that doesn't mean all special requests, but things like dietary restrictions or certain preferences, usually we can accommodate. Now, on the flip side, if you're eating with a group and catching up and conversing is more important, then the tables are probably better. All right, and now on to our last section of the video, making sushi. So you understand what sushi is. You go out and try it, you have a great experience, and you absolutely fall in love with it. But dang, your wallet is not happy you have this new obsession. So what can you do? Well, making sushi at home might sound intimidating, but it's actually not as hard as you may think. And good thing you're here because that's what my channel is all about. So if you're new, be sure to subscribe and check out all the videos I have on not only how to make sushi, but other popular Japanese dishes as well. Or better yet, if you really want to learn how to make sushi, then check out my book. It's called How to Make Sushi at Home, a fundamental guide for beginners and beyond. It's filled with step-by-step -step instructions with full color images teaching you everything you need to know about making sushi. Whether it's at home or professionally at a restaurant, if you're trying to make sushi, then this book will guide you. I'll leave links below for those that are interested. Wait, you didn't think I was going to show you how to make sushi here when I have a full channel dedicated to it, right? Speaking of my channel, I also have a guide on Japanese sake which can help you pick out the right bottle to pair with your favorite sushi. So if you want to have an even better experience the next time you're out eating sushi, check out this video right over here. Alright, I hope you found this video helpful and for the sushi beginners out there or those that haven't tried sushi yet, my hope is that this video can help you have a great sushi experience and keep making those experiences better and better. Because the world of sushi is amazing and there's so much variety and so much creativity involved. It really is an art form. And once you learn how to appreciate it, there's nothing else like it. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Arigatou gozaimasu!